for gosh a long time. And um, the, the, the concept of selling an image is out. My consultant told me about almost five years ago, he's been my consultant for 20 years, and uh, he looked at my uh, cover image. I was so proud of that image. You know, I said, I got it. And I guess he felt that I felt the same thing. So he, because he gave me a call. Yeah. And he said, Shotgun, nice image you got there on the cover. Um, what the F are you selling? Don't tell me an image. Because my daughter with a 36 apps creates good images. That's not your competition, is it? I'm going to have lunch, and I'll call you back in a couple hours. And Chuck, you have to sell a product or a service. And, you know, the steampunk thing is great. You've been doing that for, you know, many years. Keep that thing, no one else is doing it, that's your niche. Attract people into a home that want to do it. You have all the clothes, you have everything. Don't sell the clothes. Just use that as a shiny object to bring the women in. And that's what I did. Rent a Airbnb, four, five, six bedroom, charge 850 bucks a head, have designers, buy clothes, their clothes, bring them in there, throw a bucket of shoes on the floor, yep. let them fight over it, have a chef come in, cheese, wine, have fun, and kick them out with an image. We yeah. sell the experience, not the image. Yeah, yeah I'm and very, so, very clear on that. They get, they get to work with you as a professional model, they get to work with Chuck and some other photographers he brings in. That's a facade. Oh, here's what happened. Basically. Inspiring other people to feel comfortable with who they are. But the thing is about it is to see the glory within yourself and to feel comfortable to stand bold and naked in front of the universe and to let them see that just like a rose, people are perfect on their own. You don't have to be without blemish or flaw to be yourself. Steampunk is interesting because there's a little bit of harshness to it. So there's a strength in it that comes with the femininity too. And the sexuality, I feel like, is not as aggressive or upfront with other things. And that the image isn't necessarily meant to entice, but to draw the viewer in and to maybe make you think. There's more than one kind of beautiful. I like it. Every Well, I mean, usually... When you go to shoots, especially big cluster shoots, because I do a lot of boudoir and a lot of glamour photography, wow. that um, everybody gets along well, but that no one really is friends because we don't. We might interact a little bit, but not that much. Mm -hmm. This is different because it really is a family and a whole group of people, mm -hmm. and so they all know each other. They interact with each other, and they're part of each other's personal lives. So it's interesting to watch. Beautiful images coming from beautiful relationships. Let's make a movement. What I do is I introduce women to themselves. Women don't talk to one another on a deeper level. They don't. They call me the bitch whisperer. <laughs> so what I do is I talk to them first. I get them to tell me their shortcomings. So I understand which woman is going to enhance or be a cancer to a certain scenario. So I'll, I'll have these, like we have one coming up now, which is the um, uh, Lake Powell event. So right now, I have probably about six women coming to that one. I know every one. I know which one are gonna, ones are going to stay on the boat. I know which ones I'm going to have in the hotel. And every event that I have, each woman leaves her saying, I did not know I could be such a friend to another woman. That's what I'm doing. I'm basically blindsiding them because every woman dreams. Every woman wants to be on the back of the Lincoln convertible, waving to everyone. Mm -hmm. She wants to live that experience. So basically, our society has pushed these women into a corner to where they can't live out those dreams because they're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. So basically, I give them an excuse to come out and live that dream. That's what I sell. Has nothing to do with Chuck, has nothing to do with Vilma, 
has nothing to do with my photography. So Steve got a package. And so I said, Steve, you know, the biggest thing now is not, cause he's always, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough. Oh, you know, I want to shoot my wife and she won't let me cause I'm not good enough. You know, he's steadily beating himself up about, I'm like, Steve, you're good enough. I can show you a couple things. You don't need all these new cameras or anything like this. I can show you the illusion that most women have of themselves mm -hmm. and we can correct that. But that's not straight out of the camera. You know what? Any any photographer tells me that they're trying to make everything all natural, they just can't edit. No. They just yeah. can't. Yeah. I stretch, I tuck, uh -huh. I, well, I I mean, I make everything perfect. That's what they want. Yep. They want to look as good as they think they look. You well, don't see any magazine like Vogue or anything with raw images on the cover. Nobody never, wants that. Never, no. never, never, I'm way, never. I'm way past that. I, I'm on yeah, the side, yeah. so I clearly understand that. But I don't sell the, you know, the picture side of it. You can't sell an image. Because oh, once you start trying to sell an image, it's all about price at this point. Yeah. You know, my cousin can do it. Yeah. My, 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 my friend, my uncle, uh, yeah. you know, everybody else can do it. So I don't even compete in that world. I don't even deal with models. The average model can't even define what model is. Mm -hmm. If I ask the average model, what is a model? They can't tell me. Mm -hmm. And if I tell them the true meaning of it, you're a co-painter for someone else's product. Because you're selling someone else's dream. You're buying cameras for somebody else to sell their product. Some, exactly. And they don't want to hear that because they're in it for a different reason. Right. To make themselves feel good. Exactly. But then they're twisting that into you know, uh, I'm, I have a career, I'm doing this, everyone tells me I'm beautiful, I should be a model, you know, and then they go out there and don't understand the definition or the meaning of model. In Europe, a model is called a mannequin. Mm -hmm. That's what they call a model yeah. in Europe, a mannequin. Yeah. And Voice operated mannequin. Uh, Move over here, walk this way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. I, I use hand signals. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I'm, I, I, you know, I, I deal with a lot of languages, yeah, so you yeah. know, I've learned to, you know, yeah. you know, you know, here, 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 you know, that's one thing. And the biggest thing about a business is that you need eyeballs, mm -hmm. and the correct eyeballs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they do a lot of uh, network shoots where you have photographers who are building a portfolio, models who are building a portfolio, mm -hmm. designers who are building a portfolio, and then every, they're in this big circle. Mm -hmm. No money exchange. You can't. They get out there and they get really good. And the model finally says one day, "Oh my goodness, uh, I'm ready." Hey, man. hey, Chuck. Hey, um, um, whenever you're in town, call me up. I don't want to say, "Look, we have over two hundred thousand followers." I don't know how I can remember you. Mm -hmm. I just don't know how. I can't say that because that's arrogant. Right. So, you know, uh, you know, a few years ago, I used to say, you know, like, well, you know, I can't, you know, I'm like, you know, Chuck, that's not cool. You know, I just, okay, you know, um, if I miss you when I come in town, look me up. When they do call me, it's like, what is this collaboration? Who's bringing what? Well, I'm experienced and I've been pub published. Who, how are you being sought after now? What kind of pay get? I will pay you what you have been receiving on the regular for the last thirty day, or ninety days. Mm -hmm. They can't tell me. They've done so. You're not even. You don't have a way to attract people to pay you. Why are you coming to me to pay you? You're not. You don't have an established business. And when I look at your per portfolio, it's filled with a bunch of thirsty men. I sell women's experiences. So your the value that you bring to the table. It's really nothing to me because a man doesn't really, I don't know about women's issues, women's clothing, fashion, mm -hmm. and these these men do nothing for me. And then they're angry at me because, and I understand, because they are like, you know, I've been doing this for four years, and you're telling me what I've been doing for four years is wrong, they get mad and leave. Yeah. And now, now I'm a jerk, you know, but, you know, that's okay. My clients are, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 year old women who want to have fun. The kids are gone. They've seen every bad issue in life. You know, they're settled, married. Their, you know, finances are okay. That's my client base. They see themselves a certain way, and you get the opportunity, or they get the opportunity to step outside of that. A lot of times, the, the average woman at 40 doesn't even know how to put on makeup on. And has also been afraid to ask someone out. This is what I get. I get women who want to, they see what I do, and they get jealous. But then they also are afraid to approach that because they're, they're, they're thinking that, oh, I'm a model. 
I don't want to be a model. I just want to have fun. So they don't want to take that stigma of being a 40 year old woman jumping over here in a world where normally there's 18 to 24 year old women. They don't want to do that. So they're afraid. But then when they see my work, oh man, Vilma's 41, Genevieve is 53, Susie is 62. Oh, they're having a good time. And then yeah. I show the videos of how fun it is and what they're doing. Like, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. Steve, oh gosh, over a year ago, he was going to Moab and uh, he said, uh, he said something. I said, well, why don't you do one of these programs? Oh, I'm not a photographer. You know, I'm just, I'm just playing. And a year later, he's like, Chuck, I'd like to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I explained to Steve that, you know, here's what I do, you know, and he wants to make money at it, mm -hmm. you know, because he's buying all this equipment. I said, Steve, you know, you can buy all the equipment in the world. If you don't have a right, you can have a Picasso on your wall. The only people that are going to see that Picasso are the people that come to your threshold and look at it. Other than that, you're marketing to the same people who are doing everything for free. You need to get out there. And so that's when we get out there. We do the salt flats thing. Um, I, I do sturges. I do stuff. I make clothing for Sony. I make clothing for other women to market their um, stuff. So I, I send leggings all around the world. Yeah, you do. I put the code on there, they scan it and come to my website. I've been doing this for four years and a lot of photographers won't do it because they don't want to copy me. Um, they want to be the ones that come up with an idea. And they don't want to, and I had one of my good buddies, like Chuck, you know what, I'm just, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't want you to make money off me. <laughs> I'll sit here and struggle. I'll buy a new $4,000, $5,000 camera, $8,000 lens, a $15,000 drone, just so I don't have to give you 100 bucks. I said, dude, I love you. I know where I stand. Let me buy you dinner. He said, let's, okay. <laughs> Epson, those are the ones that print my, uh, my prints. Right. And um, they sponsor, uh, they, they, I, I lease them my images and they go to these big events. So I'll go into a trade show in Las Vegas, or we're in New York, wherever they go. I'll have two, three, four girls in there, and we'll just walk in there, and we will take over that whole event. With two girls. Walk through there, and then everybody comes to me. So what I'm doing is marketing. Yep. These people are coming to me. I found a way to make somebody stop and pay attention to what we're doing. Same way we got Sony as a client. You know, they they seen what we do. They like, oh my goodness. They called us in San Diego and they sat us down. I'm nervous. I'm like I'm sweating. I'm like man, Sony, the big guys. This is it. I'm I'm Bill and I walk in there. She says, Chuck, you know, you know, you love me. Yeah, you gotta say that, you know? <laughs> I walked in there, and these guys, one guy, he's from the um, the software side. Um, the, um, um, I think Final Cut is, uh, um, Sony does Final Cut, the video software. Yeah, yep. And then uh, um, and then Adobe Premiere, they do a lot of work with them in schools and in training and stuff like that. That guy from that department came over, and the guy from the uh, camera and film division came over uh, as well. They sat down there with us and said, okay, done socks, we've done koozies, you know, give us some ideas. I'm like, wait a minute, you guys have billions of dollars, yeah. and you're coming here asking me what to do? And at that moment, you know, I'm a, you know I consider myself, you know, an uh, um, okay talker, and at that moment, things clicked for me, like, okay, I have something here. So, what I did was, you know, uh, I started selling products. I started selling the clothing. Well, I don't care where we go to McDonald's or wherever, where people are always coming to it. You make people stop. I understand your marketing st strategy. So um, when they stop, here's what we give them. Yeah. I, whatever dream you have in your head, whatever direction that you want to do, I can give you a product to make that real. 